On a high level, cervical spondylosis then is age-related wear and tear that will affect all of the different structures of the cervical spine. So it'll affect the bones, it'll affect the discs, and it'll affect the ligaments. And as those wear out over time, they can cause pressure on the nerves and the spinal cord and cause a variety of different symptoms that we will talk about. So if you imagine the degenerative cascade, as we talked about right here, it starts with the discs that look really healthy. And then the discs lose their water content as exemplified over here in a couple of these discs. And as they lose their water content, think of that as like they lose some of their sponginess, they lose their turgor. They're not as effective as a cushion kind of covering between the two bones. They start losing their height because they lose their sponginess. And you can see that over here in this disc and this disc over there. Now, if they lose enough height, it's no longer an effective cushion between bones. You start seeing some reaction. The bone, which is kind of bone on bone, can start becoming what we call sclerotic. And you see these bone spurs kind of forming here. Think of that as being two bones that are just being rubbing against each other because there is no good cushion between them. You start seeing some reactive bone changes or what we call osteophytes. It will affect some of the structures in the front, but there are structures in the back that will be affected. And we will talk about that when we talk about bone spurs and uh, bony degeneration.